So first, since we haven't met before, if you can just give me your name and title and then spell it as well. Sure, absolutely. Pam Yonke, Farm Director, Midwest Farm Report Radio Network, last name J-A-H-N-K-E. All right, so first, just kind of a basic question. What are you here for this evening to kind of help moderate and present to uh, those that come sure. to the talk? You know, today we hear about uh, the world marketplace and tariffs and trade wars, et cetera, but bringing it home to how it impacts Wisconsin agriculture specifically this evening is kind of the task at hand. So we've got uh, different sectors of Wisconsin agribusiness that are here, as well as uh, folks that look at it from a policy standpoint. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, even in small communities uh, like Stevens Point, Plover, Merrill, Wausau, uh, we are feeling the impacts of these world conversations. So we're going to take a closer look at what it means to our Wisconsin agriculture economy and our neighborhoods as a whole. And then we're also going to take a little bit different look. Okay, if we find resolution, if we start to get some things straightened, uh, straightened out, is that bode well for Wisconsin agriculture and Wisconsin's economy, or uh, is it a flat line? So we'll be exploring that. So what kind of, so far from your perspective, has been the biggest impact of this kind of difficulty with trade negotiations here in central Wisconsin between the two countries? Sure. So my primary emphasis always is Wisconsin agriculture. So as soon as these conversations started to heat up last year, I farmed myself. So not only did I talk about it on the radio and on television, I also was feeling it at my family farm. Um, we saw markets erode very, very quickly as far as the price that I could receive for the commodities that was being grown. It hit soybeans particularly hard, corn as well. And then we started to see the mounting impacts on a, especially in central Wisconsin, ginseng. Um, major crop for Wisconsin, a, a high value crop that lost its market in just a matter of hours, quite honestly, and still has not gained it back. And then it's not just about Southeast Asia, which we're discussing specifically tonight, but we've seen those conversations ramp up with Mexico, with Canada, and that's had pronounced impacts on our dairy industry right in central Wisconsin with uh, you know, some of our, our butter manufacturers losing contracts that uh, suddenly then they didn't need milk and that in turn had a ripple effect on a lot of Wisconsin dairies. So whether you acknowledge it or not, your friends and neighbors near you are being impacted by these world conversations. And what are ways to help people understand how such a big topic impacts people locally, especially if maybe they're not farmers or maybe they don't really know a ton of people that farm? I think the best thing is just ask the question, have the conversation. People that you're working with may have a couple acres of ginseng and may, may farm part-time. Have the conversation with them. How has it impacted them? How are they dealing with it? Uh, you know, you can... You can't go very far in central Wisconsin between Marathon, Clark, and Wood Counties without seeing a dairy operation. You know, when you see those people, ask them, what have you noticed? How has it changed the dynamics of your family, your farming operation? How long can you withstand this kind of uncertainty? So I'd say first, ask the questions. Next, I know everybody wants to trust Mr. Google with all their information requests, but I'd really encourage you to look to our Wisconsin sources when it comes to finding out about the impact. You know, we've got a lot of great associations. All of our commodity groups are engaged in this conversation. Wisconsin Corn Growers, Wisconsin Soybean Growers, Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, Farm Bureau, Farmers Union, they're all out there and they're ready to help you understand the long-term impact and short-term repercussions. All you need to do is look for that information uniquely. And are there any ways that people can help? You know, honestly, I wish that there were. I think you can always talk to your elected officials. Once you know the story of how it's impacting your neighbors or your community, and again, as I said, I specifically am about agriculture. Once you've had that knowledge base, then don't be afraid to talk to elected officials. I think they're hearing it a lot already uh, and just kind of keep that conversation going. And uh, we'll hopefully see some resolution, obviously, sooner the better as far as my Wisconsin farm and agribusiness community is concerned. But I don't think ever having that conversation or letting elected officials know that you are paying attention, I don't think that's ever a bad thing. And if a re resolution does come, what can farmers in the area do to kind of recover from what the impacts have been so far? Well, you know, that's something that I, I want people to be keenly aware of now. We're starting to hear so much conversation about the, the farm bill, farm programs, uh, the weather has not helped us 
in central Wisconsin or anywhere in the state this year. So it's salt in an already open wound for most farmers. And I don't want consumers to think that this is the saving grace. This will help the farms. It'll keep the farms. In reality, it is a drop in the bucket. Uh, this will not provide long-term sustainability for our farms, no matter what they're growing or producing. So please don't think that they're excited about needing this. They'd rather have open markets than a uh, check from the government. So please understand that first. And then I guess what we hope is that it will be rectified soon, that uh, agriculture will uh, be restored back to the relationships that it spent a lot of time and money growing over decades. Hopefully those relationships have not eroded and whatever framework or infrastructure we end up with in the end will still allow for those trade relationships to go on. And you know, I guess the hope always is that it'll mean expanded opportunities for Wisconsin agriculture, Wisconsin commodities, Wisconsin agribusiness and farmers in general.